Hi, my name is Roman Harkovsky. I'm with the IBM Worldwide Cloud Competitive Team. In this session today, we will look into a new version of the cost calculator that would compare IBM MQ and JBoss AMQ products. Both of these are messaging products and on the surface they appear to do the same thing, although we have done technical research to compare the failover, reliability, availability, manageability, and other qualities of services of these two products and there are some significant differences. We're starting with a set of assumptions. In this case it's one year scenario and you could see if you hover over the mouse you could see some help explaining what the fields are. For this calculation we will change one year to something more realistic later. Now number of support contacts. This is how many people will be able to call the vendor to get the support. Uh, for the beginning scenario we'll just have one physical server with one socket, four cores per socket. I know this is not realistic. We're just starting with a very very small configuration. IBM PVU rating uh, and in terms of the IBM PVU rating we have this article on the web that explains how many PVUs do you need for what kind of processors if you google IBM PVU rating for customers then you will see what kind of PVU ratings belong to what kind of processors those who wanna buy JVM support on non Red Hat for instance from Oracle will are using 0 0.5 as Oracle core factor and for now we will not consider purchase of JDK support or database for the JBoss operations network and we have zero existing licenses of MQ now in terms of performance advantage this is a very important one we have done performance tests and you can find the article on the blog at ibmadvantage.com for persistent messaging IBM MQ runs about 70% faster on average than JBoss AMQ and in certain message sizes it's a bigger advantage in certain message sizes it's a smaller advantage but on average it's about 70% so if you want to read complete report or even better yet do it yourself go ahead to ibmadvantage.com read the article and download all of the tests and you can repeat that yourself we will be using list pricing for IBM and Red Hat for Oracle JVM will consider 65 percent discount so these are inputs on the left on the right we have uh, different levels of workload through the year now in initial calculation we're considering that there is flat workload so basically what we're saying is that it doesn't matter than that in January or February or July the workload is less than in some other months we will just say we are gonna buy for the peak for entire year now you can also change that so for instance you could say I have ratio of peak to normal let's say 10 and I have only one peak months in a year which would be November and what that means is I have in November 10 times more workload than any other months and you could see that with IBM you could buy just for that one month where with Red Hat you would have to buy subscription for the full year it doesn't matter how many months you're actually using uh, so let me return it back to smaller value and for now let's turn off the peak workload now you could see that in this very simple configuration perhaps unrealistic uh, MQ is a little bit cheaper 27 percent cheaper than JBoss AMQ now let's make it a little more realistic instead of one physical server let's say we have uh, say six physical servers now in this configuration for one year IBM is more expensive because with Red Hat you are buying bundles of 16 or 64 cores and when you have only one server you are still buying the same amount of servers so for instance if I go one server 12 24 and for two servers it's 24 for three servers now 42 because we have four sockets uh, four cores per server uh, so once we jump over and then we have additional support contracts then that the value the cost of JBoss AMQ increases
So we'll go to our six servers. Now, how realistic is that you only buy for one year? Well, probably not very realistic because messaging is something that you use long term. And in this case, you could see Red Hat is cheaper. But again, this is just total cost of acquisition. We're not considering cost of management, security, or other things. Now, more realistic scenario, I would say, would be about five years or maybe even 10 years if it's a long-term project. So think about this. With IBM, you buy the license in year one, and then you pay 20% for support on subsequent years. With Red Hat, you're paying flat year to year. So what that means is that longer term, Red Hat becomes more and more expensive relative to IBM. So you see over five years, IBM is 30% less than Red Hat. Over 10 years, IBM is 46% less than Red Hat. Again, because you pay for the license in year one, and then you only pay 20% for support. With Red Hat, it's flat. Now, by the way, with IBM, with IBM Global Financing, you don't have to pay all of it in year one. You can actually finance at 0% interest and spread it through multiple years. So then this wouldn't matter if it's five years, you don't have to spend all of the capital in year one. So we'll keep it five years because it's more realistic and because we now have six servers and probably have something like two cores per server and I would guess perhaps six cores per socket, I would also argue that you're going to have to have more contacts, more people that should be able to call the vendor and you probably want most of the people to be able to call your vendor. So for instance, we'll say 12 people and that adds additional cost on Red Hat. Uh, so with IBM, as you can see when I change it to or 12, the cost doesn't change. With Red Hat, it does. Now another thing that you might need for Red Hat if you're not running on Red Hat Linux is a JVM support. And if you use the JVM support for for instance on Windows or some other platforms then you have to purchase that JVM support unless you're willing to run on unsupported JVM in which case your operating system is supported your messaging is supported your application is supported by your team but your JVM is not supported uh, so that would be no and then you see yes for the JVM support and Red Hat becomes so much more expensive because obviously JVM costs money. The other thing, if you have a larger configuration with multiple servers, so for instance you have 12 servers, and for that many servers and that many instances, you would probably have 20 or 30 instances of messaging running your workloads, you probably need distributed management. So with ActiveMQ to do the distributed management, you need something that's called JBoss Operations Network. And JBoss Operations Network is included in the cost, but it requires a database and it requires a hardware to run that database. So if we use JBoss Operations Network, then Red Hat AMQ becomes more expensive. And again, this is over five years on 12 servers. Uh, let's take it perhaps down to six servers. It is very unlikely that your workloads are flat across the year. So I would suspect most likely you have at least a couple of months of workload that's not flat. And that's when you can buy by the months from IBM. And if you're a retailer, perhaps it's only one month of peak workload. Uh, so you could see how it changes. And if you use two months of peak workloads and you use these assumptions, then MQ is 72% less expensive than Red Hat. And again, this is just for the license and support cost. And it does not include administration, security, reliability, and other capabilities. And if you want to learn more about MQ, you can go to quality of services and click on administration or on security, for instance. And you could see all of the articles that we have. Not all of them are on MQ, but here is, for instance, security comparison between WebSeer MQ and Apache ActiveMQ. Uh, so you could see the differences between these two products in terms of security. Uh, you could also click here on technology and go into messaging and see all of the articles on ActiveMQ. 
And these articles cover not just security that we've already discussed, but also high availability. There is a presentation from Interconnect that I've done last year, and it compares a lot of technical details in much more depth, both pricing and technical comparison. And there is cost calculator will be posted here. So this is my old cost calculator. I will update this article so that when you go here to MQ versus JBoss AMQ cost calculator, you'll be able to download instead of this old calculator, you can download this new calculator. And again, what we've done in this video, we just went through this tip of the iceberg. We only looked at the software license and subscription cost. We haven't discussed any of this hidden part of the iceberg, the SLA penalties, the risk of downtime, the ease of administration, the productivity of developers or administrators. None of that was included in total cost of ownership. This is TCA as opposed to TCO. Thank you for your time.